Perfect. Perfect indeed. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us for yet another info session for the 2023 Cecil New Signatures Art Competition. My name is Kunzo Sidogi, and with me is uh, Kate Tablanche, and we are part of the awesome organizing team. So we are continuing with our information sessions and today we are covering a very, very important uh, topic around the supporting documents uh, that entrants have to submit or some of the supporting documents that entrants have to submit when bringing their works uh, to the collection points. And Kate, uh, I think you will kick this off because there are two documents that the entrants have to submit, which are the CV and then the bio. And that often confuses me that what is the difference? Aren't they the same thing? Uh, so please help us out, Kate. What's the difference between the CV and the bio? Okay, dokes. So, um... It's really actually, um, you know, both the documents actually deal with who you are as a person. Um, but the bio is just a little bit more of a, a story, a narrative, if we can put it that way. So um, if you think of, you know, when you're going to uh, a gallery, um, you want a little bit of information about who the artist is and everything. So you would normally find that information somewhere, maybe at the, you know, at the entrance of the gallery, maybe next to the artwork and different places. And it is normally a really quite a short little uh, document. And it just really actually tells you a little bit about who the artist is as a person, where they were born, what kind of work they produce, what their interests are and so forth. So that would be a bio. <clears throat> um, the CV is slightly different. That's a more of an official document. And I think when we think of CV, we immediately think of, um, you know, applying for a job, a job interview. So it's sort of the same thing. The only thing is that the artistic CV is slightly different. So there are different elements that are actually incorporated into a artistic CV. So that would extend um, to all your artistic endeavors. So that would include, you know, your education, um, the relevant artistic e education. We, you know, if you went to varsity, if you went to whatever workshops or whatever, um, your exhibitions. Normally these are like divided into two groups, group exhibitions and solo exhibitions. And remember, if you have had a solo exhibition, which wasn't for academic purposes, you actually can't enter the, into the competition, unfortunately. So remember that. So then we have the exhibitions, the group exhibitions, solo exhibitions. And, you know, then there are also a couple of other categories, um, you know, things that, that we normally include, such as awards, um, publications, things that you have written or publications that people have written about you. You can list those if you've been on residencies, um, if you've had any public sculptures, commissions or anything like that. So you could all list all of those. So that would actually really be listed in the CV. So um, what we've gone and done is actually we've created two templates. Um, which would be are going to be on the website, the Sassel New Signatures website. So if you want to use that, um, you're welcome to. You can just delete some of the text that isn't necessary and then just add your own information in there. And then you a sort of a guideline to help you just put that together. So so yeah. that's really actually basically, the, in short, the difference between the bio and the CV. And, and thank you so much for, for making that distinction, uh, Kate. And, and perhaps a, a further uh, space that the entrance can 
go to in order to, to get assistance for how to develop a bio specifically is to look at previous catalogs of the Cecil New Signatures yes. Art Competition, because there you'll find that for the winner and the runner up, uh, we also include the bio of the artist. And there you will see it is very short. In some cases, it's two, three sentences. Uh, this is not a, a long story of, of yourself. Perhaps the, the best way to summarize it is to say that the CV provides the detail and the biography provides the milestones from your CV. So you in your biography, you really want to lift out the milestones, as Kate said, where you were born, if you have some kind of training to then that's a milestone that you put there, that this is the training. If you've been part of an exhibition before, you include it there, has exhibited in this, it's a milestone. And also just maybe one short sentence um, outlining the type of work that you produce. Um, so thank you for making that, that distinction. And, and as noted, there are those templates that are available. And also online, there are many other examples that the potential entrance can can access to to get a yes. sense of how yes. uh, an artist CV looks like and how a bio looks like. Yes. Then Kate, we move on to the next uh, big requirement. Oh, uh, and this is the biggie. <laughs> that's right. Uh, which, this, is, which... this is the one that always makes everyone go, oh my word. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it has, of course, uh, uh, a lot of impact actually in, in, in whether the artwork of the entrance makes it past the regional round and also whether that work becomes a winning work or not. And that is, of course, the synopsis, also known as the artist statement. Um, and of course, this is a requirement for the competition. And perhaps I'll just kick off this discussion by noting that the artist statement is a, is a very contentious uh, little document in contemporary art making because there are some artists and even some curators who say you don't need to read the artist statement or to have an artist statement. One must just experience the artwork for what it is. Why do we need this document or this piece of paper that explains what the artwork is all about? And we, we, we note that. That is certainly, I think, something that um, we cannot deny. And in the past, we've actually had uh, some, some entry who have played on that notion and and would not have an artist statement or would have a one sentence artist statement because that was part and parcel of the concept of the artwork. But it is one of the requirements of the competition that when you submit your artworks for each artwork that you submit, we are expecting an artist statement for each artwork that you submit. So remember, you can submit two artworks if you want. And if you are submitting those two artworks, because they are two separate artworks, we're expecting two separate artist statements. And so that's just to, to kick it off. But Kate, on, on, from your experience, how best can can an artist approach this this whole uh, challenge of the artist statement? You know, there are, there are various debates. Some say the artist statement must come before you start the artwork. Others say no, you actually need to write the artist statement after. Um, so, what, what what advice can you give? Okay, so yes, um, I think Funza, we've both actually seen um, over the years that we've been involved with the competition. Um, you know, we as the judges, we only see the artwork. We have no other information. So um, we don't even know who the who the artist is, where they come from, what their background is, nothing. So we don't have anything to really actually sort of guide us. Um, not that not that that's important. <laughs> sometimes mm -hmm. it is important and sometimes it's not. Mm -hmm. But we we look at the work and we often you know from our experience and our education and you know we have a certain interpretation and often what would happen is that most of the judges sort of have the same kind of interpretation of the work um and then after a little bit of discussion one would say but this sort of I'd like to see a little bit more information on this aspect. Why did the artist use this specific thing? And then we go to the artist statement. And so many times we've actually seen that, you know, once we read the artist statement, we go, whoa. <laughs> 
um, the two don't match. That's you right. Know? The two don't match. And unfortunately, you know, then, you know, that opens up a whole can of worms. And then often what happens is that the worm work ultimately um, doesn't go through, doesn't get selected for whatever reason, you know, because what the artist intended, that's what the artist put into that document, said this is what I was working with. This was my thought process and this was what I wanted the viewers to understand. And then when you look at the work, it, it's two yeah. different things. You know, yeah. so so that, that disparity is actually quite a bit of, you know, th th that's actually a bit uh, problematic. That, that's so, right. So. And, and, and part of it, the, if I can jump in, yeah, but part, part of the challenge that you are highlighting um, is that uh, it goes back to, to the question I asked earlier is when do you write the artist statement? Yes. And um, that that uh, disparity between the artwork and the artist statement usually takes place when the artist was not thinking about what they were making as they yes. were making it and yes. why they are making it. So yes. while there is no uh, clear answer as to when you have to write the artist statement, right, whether it comes before or during or after, what we can definitely say is that throughout the entire art making process from start to finish you have to be thinking very clearly and very deeply about what you are making and why you are making it so that that is becomes part and parcel of the the artist statement and we don't get this situation where um the two are are completely misaligned um so so this is just once again our advice. We're not saying that this is the rule, that this is the way that it has to happen, but just based on the experience uh, from the competition, as Kate has noted, um, uh, it, it is so heartbreaking when you find a, a really fascinating artwork uh, which just needs um, a clear and succinct artist statement that speaks to it, uh, not making it through because the artist statement was completely uh, saying something different. Yes, I think there's also quite a lot of pressure, um, you know, like at, right at the end, if you're writing your artist statement, there's a bit of pressure like, oh gosh, I have to have something like really intelligent, important to say, or, you know, <laughs> I've got to refer to some theorist or something. And <laughs> You know, that wasn't actually part of the process. Yeah. So and then you bring it in and it actually it doesn't manifest in the work. Yeah. So it's very important, you know, so to think about it as you're working and, you know, maybe make notes and things, you know, for right at the end when you get to the stage where you actually want to write your your artist statement that you know actually more or less where you've been what kind of influences you've had what is what is the meaning behind your work you know mm -hmm. and really to go like oh right so now where do i start let me see <laughs> bring right. something in and I think that another thing is also, you know, sometimes um, some of the, the artist statements that we see um, try to be very too technical. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we often see immediately, we can immediately pick up that the person doesn't really actually have a proper understanding of that term or whatever. So if you don't understand that, if, you know, if you're, if you may be still in your first year and you haven't done you know, the philosophies of so and so and so, and mm. then don't even mention it, you know, yeah. just keep it simple. That's fine. Just keep it simple and don't try and, and you know, bring in anything that's, that's try and impress the judges or anything so, like that. Straightforward, simple. Certainly. And again, we can, we can provide evidence of this if uh, you go and look at previous catalogs and look at some of the winners. Some of the artist statements were as 
you're saying, Kate, very simple, very straightforward. Um, and and actually, that's that's what the impressed the judges uh, that the, there was a clarity of message that was coming yes. through, um, which was unconfusing um, and, and really clearly worded, uh, plainly worded. Uh, uh, one of the, the banks uh, it used to have uh, a slogan or a tagline that went something along the lines of simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. And I absolutely love that phrase, right? The, the, the simpler your, your artist statement is or your synopsis is, actually the more sophisticated it can become. So please, again, look at those examples from, from previous winners and you'll see that uh, very rarely are they bringing up these big terms and big words. It's, it's very straightforward, uh, uh, giving a clear indication to the viewer or the reader what the work is about. I think and something, you know, that can also be brought in is to really actually maybe just clarify things that are very specific to your artwork. So um, especially if you have a title which is in a different language, yes. um, you know, to explain the language and explain the, the yes. meaning behind that, because not all your viewers are going to um, mm. be fluent in the language that 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 you that you've been using. Um, any kinds of symbolism, uh, metaphors that you've used, you know, explain those because that's actually what the reader, those are the keys that the viewer needs to be able to understand the work. So um, I would really actually maybe recommend that if you get to the stage of writing your artist statement, take your artwork and take your statement to someone that hasn't seen that before and ask them to read it and look at the work and say, do they align? Do they align? Does mm. does this make sense? Mm. Do you see? Mm. Does this describe my artwork? Yeah, yeah. And you know, then you can of, often also you know just get a feeling for of, of whether you're on the right track or not. So Co completely. Yes. And and Kate, you bring up a, an important point that that we need to address, especially in a country like ours that is multilingual, multicultural, multi-ethnic. We of course welcome. Um, artists that uh, tap into different uh, linguistic traditions when they are discussing their work because indeed their work might be informed by different cultural backgrounds and experiences. Absolutely. But, mm. but you make such an important point that um, in order to get the widest possible audience or viewership to appreciate your art, remember the judges are there to actually appreciate. They're not looking for fault. They want to appreciate. So to help them appreciate and to to help them uh, get a, a kind of insider perspective into into why you made that work. And, and and I think this question of the why, the artist statement, not only describes the artwork, but it it gets into the why. Why? Because yes. oftentimes that's the question the judges ask. Um, we see this this painting, but why did this artist do so? To to give us the why, or to give the the viewer an understanding of of the motivations uh, that you had that compelled you to spend hours or months and thousands of friends, if if you if it costs you that much money to produce that artwork, the artist statement is key, and the point that Kate made around translation is absolutely important we we actually uh, we we cherish titles that are in different languages other than english but there has to be translation uh, we we really um, ask for that uh, that there is clear and succinct uh, translation so that again the viewer can really appreciate what it is that you are making I think those the titles in different languages is actually so fascinating because yeah. it just really opens up so many, so many interpretations yeah. for yeah. for different viewers. You know, yeah. um, you know, you might have one word um, in one language meaning something, and then in a different language it means something yeah. totally different. And when you actually think in terms of those translations, it could actually oh. add quite a wonderful 
level of meaning to the work. So um, mm. it's, it's, it's wonderful when artists actually really engage with the language um, in their titles and so forth. Um, it's really something that I, I really enjoy. So, yeah. So to, to <clears throat> conclude this, we obviously appreciate that uh, not all of the entrants, in fact, most of the entrants are not first language English speakers. So our advice is when you do write your artist statement, please solicit the assistance of someone that uh, is, is really good or competent in English, uh, especially if it's not your, your first language. Uh, sometimes it's, it's a little bit disappointing that uh, there are some basic uh, spelling mistakes and some basic grammatical mistakes that make it hard for us as, as uh, the, the judges or the viewers to, to really understand or grasp what the, the person was trying to say. So uh, as far as possible, you don't have to pay for the services of a professional language editor, not at all, but, but just uh, try and get assistance from someone who you know is is fairly competent in, in English just to look through it to edit it. Uh, fortunately these days uh, we've got uh, software that does that uh, for us and some of it is is, is free you know we don't want to advertise that software but you can go online and and, and find uh, editing software that that is freely available uh, but please make use of that the same way that um, in, in a, another info session, we deal with the importance of good, crisp presentation. It's the same with the bio, the CV and the artist statement. Uh, spelling mistakes, uh, punctuation mistakes, grammar mistakes uh, do put you at a disadvantage. Um, but again, we are not saying get, get professional <laughs> uh, language editing. It's just the, the, the need for it to to at the very at a very basic level be readable and understandable. It's the makeup and the hair that I spoke about <laughs> in the previous session. That's right. <laughs> the presentation, right. the whole package. That's right. <laughs> we do judge the book by its cover. Yes. yes, yes. But I think in really actually in simple terms, the statement is really actually just a space for you to say what your work is about and how you actually got to that space. So what it is that influenced you, if you've had any issues that, you know, social, political, whatever kind of issues that are very important in your life and in your art, um, and how that manifests, and how, what this specific work actually uh, means and what you would like to convey to the, to the viewer. It's Completely. as simple as that. Yeah. That's right. And as difficult as that. <laughs> and as difficult as that. And a final word, please stick to the word count restriction. Yes. We do get artist statements that are three pages long. And yes. I can I can tell you the judges do not have time to read through that. Not yeah. because they don't want to. It's just they do not have the time. Um, at the regional judging round, we are judging hundreds of artworks in a space of a few hours. Uh, the, the judges just do not have the time and uh, to indulge in your beautiful writing. So please adhere to the word count restriction and make use of the online resources that we've made available uh, via our website and the blog and the fact sheets so that you, you really put yourself in the best possible position to, to get your work selected. I think just on that point, just a last closing remark um, is, is um, the statements coming from students, master's students, honours students. We've also also seen that, you know, those students often just take quite a big yeah. chunk out of the dissertation yeah. and just bring it over. And um, sometimes there's a lot of information in there that's actually not even relevant because in this situation, you're actually only um, submitting one work or two works. Yeah. Um, and the artist statement or the synopsis in your dissertation is actually for a whole body of work. Yeah. So those students actually do need to adapt the artist statements to the work. So don't just copy and paste and think you've done it. <laughs> that, that's right. Yeah, yeah. 
but um, it's not as scary as what as what no. we've made it out to not be at, at all. all. <laughs> <laughs> not not at all. Not at all. Thank you so much for joining us for this session. Uh, we we really appreciate uh, your interest in the competition, and as we always say, we are looking forward to seeing your awesome submissions. And if you've got any questions, put that in the chat box. We'll try and see if we can answer them in later sessions. Thanks so much, everyone. Thanks Thank for you. Cheers, cheers, Kate. Cheers. Bye.